seawater, salt water absorbs electromagnetic radiation. Whether that's high frequency like light or lower frequency like radio waves, they just don't make it very far through the water. I mean, a few meters at most before they're absorbed. So how exactly do these robots get video from 2,000 feet underwater up to the internet on land? Well, you're not using 4G or 5G to get to a submarine. The first and most obvious thing is that radios and lasers aren't going to work here. Was it not possible at all to do wireless communication? There are a couple solutions, but they're not great. One, there's sort of sonar. You can use sound. That ends up being really low bandwidth, sort of like making really, really loud modem sounds into the ocean and hoping that a little bit of it gets through. There's been a company that's been experimenting with flashing bright blue lights to set data. It works to tens of meters, giving you a not very fast link. The U.S. Navy subs used to use extremely low frequency radios with these huge antennas. This was three to three hundred hertz and it managed to send a couple characters per minute so low bandwidth we can't even imagine now is it even video if you're only sending one frame per month that's sort of a philosophical question <laughs> so the only two real solutions are wires copper wires going down twisted pair or better a fiber optic cable so you have a thread of glass and you can put laser through that and that's what they used in this rov to find the giant baby squid the other sort of robots you hear about underwater are auvs autonomous underwater vehicles smart enough to do things without a tether, they can't really get video back. So most of the interesting things are these ROVs where there's a tether to the surface. Subscribe for more connectivity technology.